QuickBooks Online 2023 mileage tracking, enter vehicles, favorite location trips, and run reports. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs like we do every time to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it once again. Back to the tab to the middle, the reports on the left hand side. Let's open up one of the favorites, that being of course the balance sheet report. Go to the tab to the right and reports on the left side again, this time the other favorite, the profit and the loss. Let's close the hamburger, scroll up top and change that range from 01023 to 123, that's a five, one, okay. And then we'll tab to the middle tab, close up the hamburger and change the range to the same, 01023 to 123123. Why do I want a five there? run it okay tabbing to the left in prior presentations we've been talking about the tracking of the mileage down here if in the accounting view it's going to be located in the mileage on the left hand side and the business view it's going to be under that, that app area but remember that the actual app itself is basically on the phone and this mileage tab will be in your quickbooks file whether you connect the app or not if you connect the app it'll track your miles basically for you and you can pull that into your QuickBooks and then allocate between business and personal. If not, I'll skip this item right here. You can manly, manually enter the miles as you, are, uh, as you are making trips and whatnot. So that's what we will do now. Now note, remember that as we enter the mileage information over here, it's not gonna basically change the financial statements. We we're tracking the financial statements most likely on the income statement, for example, as we actually pay them using the actual method, if you think about it from tax standpoint. And that's just what's gonna happen because of course you're gonna be paying them out of the checking account. The mileage method over here, tracking it will give us hopefully the information necessary for taxes to make the adjustment at the end of the year. So let's do the data input and then we can talk about how we might use that at the end of the year and what that adjustment might uh, look like. So let's go back to the first tab. Now you can also imagine using this mileage tab here for other reasons as well. It could be useful if you're doing your QuickBooks for personal purposes to track your personal miles and see where you've been going and whatnot and logging uh, that information and trying to budget possibly for you know how much driving time you're going to have and so on uh, and you also might try to track your miles in here if you're trying to reimburse people in that kind of system as well and and you might say i'm going to try to reimburse people based on a standard rate or something like this and this can help you kind of track the miles but really it's geared towards it's set up to and designed for this the sole proprietor type of business trying to track the miles for uh, their business so we looked at the basic outline in a prior presentation. We got the trips up top. We've got the uh, import trip, download trips, manage favorite location and manage rules. It's gonna give you a quick summary of the information that's had the data input as you're actually entering trips then. It's gonna put them into unreviewed for those that you have not allocated to business and personal, and then the business, the personal, and all of them. Obviously the business ones are the ones that are gonna give you the little calculation up top for the possible tax benefits uh, related to it. All right, so let's hit the drop down up top and let's go into first managing the vehicles. So we gotta have the vehicles on the books, of course. So we can put in, I just put a generic couple vehicles in place. 
and so this one is the vehicle i have it in here for 2023 uh the current year but you can see that you have the data for prior years as well i'm going to say the vehicle uh car it's gonna i'm gonna put the make and model of the vehicle which is useful information because you might need it to give to your tax professional because they might need that information to populate the vehicle when they first start doing whatever method they're going to use on the taxes so that's information that you want to have you know available so you probably want more than just you know a ford you want the whole breakout of the make and model uh, possibly and then the vehicle year i put in here and then you own this vehicle or you lease the vehicle i'm going to assume that we own the vehicle and date you bought the vehicle so i'll just put a date prior to the current year that we are in and the date that it was placed in service so i put something prior to the year that we are in and then down here we've got some useful information how do you want uh, to re record mileage for 2023 so first it says by recording odometer reading and then it says uh, by entering the total miles. Now I put up top the odometer reading because what I'd like to do is basically use this as a place where I can have my odometer reading, meaning at the beginning and end of the year, it'd be useful to, to track what your odometer is and the difference between the beginning and ending of the year on the odometer is how many miles you drove total for that year both business and personal now if you turn on like the mileage tracking app in quickbooks then maybe you could track basically everywhere you drive right and then and then all the trips that you have right here should add up to the difference between your odometer readings from the beginning to the end of the year but that kind of gives you that double check that that uh, is indeed the case. If you're not tracking everywhere you drive, every place you go, but you're just trying to track your business miles, it can give you a useful kind of guideline to see if you think you picked up the, the proper business miles, right? Because you'll have the business miles will be the actual miles that you have tracked. And the difference between the odometer readings are going to be the the at the total miles that you have that you have gone right you might not be tracking every place that you drove in that case but possibly just trying to track the business side of things so uh in some way shape or form it's useful to have the odometer reading at the beginning and the end of the year now if i go back you can add a new vehicle i added another one uh, a truck here so i put it the, the make and model once again I own the vehicle, date, place, and service. Notice if this one was now the primary item, I can tag it over as the primary. So now I've got the, uh, this one. Hold on a second. Did it do it? Let me go out and back into it. Manage vehicles. And I tried to make this one the primary. I didn't save it, did I? That's what you didn't do. You have to save it. So there it goes. So now that one is the primary. Other than that, similar kind of process. We've got mul multiple vehicles in place. So then, once we have the vehicles in place, we can, of course, start to uh, manage our our trips. So I can import a trip or add a trip simply here, or this is where I can tie in the app. So if you get the mobile app that links to your QuickBooks, in essence, and turn on the location tracking, it will start to manage uh, your location. Hopefully you want to you know, test that out and it should hopefully pull that information in to the unreviewed area and then you can manage uh, your trips from here. If you're going to manually put the information in, sometimes it's useful to add the favorite locations. So you might just say, I, I, I have a small business and I drive to a certain client oftentimes. So you might say, I have my home office and then the client that I drive to. That might be a common kind of thing so the way you can add the favorites is hit the add favorites down below here's a favorite that i added and i just basically put the address of where i'm going and i said this is our or this is my office right so everything that i drive from my we talked about the the rules for when you can deduct uh mileage for taxes and generally if that's your office your principal place of business where you're driving from there your principal place of business uh could be possibly deductible so then you might want to put your standard places where you're driving uh, like this and that can help you to 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 put the information into the system possibly 
a little bit more quickly. And once you have that, you could also then uh, manage your mileage rules. Now, I think that these rules uh, might be best applicable if you're doing the, the auto app because you could set a rule to basically assign something to business or personal and then and then possibly hopefully when you're doing the the tracking of the app it can pull in to business or personal properly if you're just doing the data input possibly just for the business side of things on a manual basis it doesn't look to me like those rules are adding a lot of value however if you're doing the application then uh, that could save you uh, some time with the rules so then I'm gonna say, all right, let's uh, add a trip. So I'm gonna add a trip and then we can put the miles up top. If I add the points of the trip that I have in my standard location, such as uh, I'm going from my office to the client, then it adds a distance up top. So it actually does a little calculation for me, which is nice. Now, obviously if you don't, if you don't enter those locations, there's no address here, uh, or you, you do have an address component, so it might, uh, populate the location basically automatically uh, if not then you're gonna have to pull you can pull in the location do a map quest type of search and pull in the location and then the business purpose meeting with a client I'm gonna say and then down here you can say enable this option will create two trips entries one going from start to end the other in the opposite direction in other words clearly if you're going to your client office and if this is pulled from like a map quest type of thing or whatever Google Maps or something to, to know how far it is if there's a round trip it should be doubled so we'll round we'll round trip it for the round trip and so then I'll say save boom now note here that it put one into into unreviewed and the other into the business area so it's a little bit wonky on where they're going to go but obviously you could just go into the unreviewed area if it hasn't allocated it out because we assigned it to business and we're going to say this is going to go to the business side of things and so i'll save it purpose it needs a purpose meeting with the client boom and then it should pull it over to the business side now so if we go to the business side we've got the two items here so uh the start end start end so if i go into both of these things it made uh, two of them with the start point, the office, the, the end point, the client. And then this one, it said the start point is, is the client and the end point is the office, right? So it did the round trip by adding two separate uh, trips in there, both of them uh, having a distance of 2.3, which adds up to a total of, of 4.61. So there's the total miles that we're tracking for business. It's multiplying that by the standard mileage rate, basically from the IRS tax code for 2023 and giving us this 3.02 for the deduction. Again, that doesn't change what's on your financial statements over here on the, on the income statement. If I refresh the income statement, it's not pulling in over a tax deductible line item here. What's happening here is we're recording the actual gas that it took uh, to drive there. And we're gonna have to make an adjustment for that at the end of the year. And that's a standard year end kind of thing for sole proprietors. They have to deal with, with the auto thing if they're using you know a mileage method to try to figure that out. All right, so, so we'll talk more about that later, but let's add another trip. And this time let's just add it straight up this way and I'll make it like a different date maybe. And this time I won't enter the distance, but I'm just gonna enter two areas. I always use the Beverly Hill addresses. So I'm gonna say it goes from, well, let's say it goes from our office and then we're gonna go to this different address, which is 10066 Cielo Drive, Beverly Hills, 90210. <laughs> so then it puts the miles. They're a little bit further away from our other Beverly Hills home. That one cost, it's on sale right now if you wanna buy it, about $55 million, $55 million. Ah, okay. So then we're gonna say, this is gonna be a meeting with client, I'll just say. And once again, I'm gonna say it's a round trip type of thing. So I'm gonna say, boom, round trip. And there it is, it's, it uh, adds one over here for some reason. So I'm just gonna say, put it to business. Round trip, man. 
meeting with client save it okay and then let's add another one let's add a trip and this one uh let's say is on uh the 31st and this time i'm going to change the vehicle to a ford to the ford and i'm going to say this one was going from our office to another client which is this is at this one's at uh 1420 david davis drive beverly hills 90210 <laughs> and then we're gonna say we're meeting with client that one cost 87 million dollars by the way the other the other cheapos over there paying this 55 million dollars next door it's a disgrace having the next door neighbors with such a cheap home anyways we're gonna save it boom and we're gonna say that let's add this business and we'll say meeting with client and so there it is so there we have our data let's add just one more and let's do let's add this one by adding another favorite locations and let's let's say this is client number three find a good home to put on here this one's 75 million so i'm going to say add a favorite and this is going to be this is going to be 2571 willing ford drive beverly hills 90210 and this one's going to be client client two they're a pretty they're a nice client over there okay so then we're gonna say let's add a trip and say so notice it's going back to my toyota for default because that's the primary but i used my ford this time and we're gonna go from the office to client number two and it's gonna be meeting with client round trip it round trip it boom so there we have it so now we've got that one showing up here and let's put it into the business side and then we'll say this is going to be business and i need a reason meeting with client okay and then let's just add a couple personal ones in there just for the, just for the fun of it i go to this visit this other person that uh lives in a a, a cheap location in beverly hills but they're cool anyways so i go there sometimes let's say this is going to say let's add a trip and then we're going to say that this is going to be uh let's say this is going from our office which is basically our home <laughs> office to uh to 623 north rexford drive and that's only like a seven million five hundred dollar place so I, t I don't I take my second vehicle there so no one recognizes me while I'm in that low class area so I'm gonna say that this is gonna be the Ford and meeting with client or not a meeting with client because this is personal this is personal stuff charity medical okay so then when you got when you when you're on the personal side you might track the personal stuff for more tax related items like simply personal or charitable and medical are actually tax related items that could be on the schedule a so let's say it's charity we're we're visiting this uh, this person that lives in this downtrodden seven million five hundred dollar home and we're doing some charity work over there or something and the reason that has to be separate is because charity work isn't going to be deductible on the schedule c but you might still want to track it because then you might be able to deduct it on the schedule a but the mileage rate isn't the same so i'm going to say track that the mileage rate isn't this 0.655 for mileage that might be deductible for like medical or for charity which could be possibly deductible on the schedule a so you might want to put that on the personal side so so you have that over here and you can say this is my other other stuff that i had miles for 
that possibly you can use a mileage rate, which would be different than the Schedule C mileage rate because it would be calculated for the Schedule A, which you would only be using if you were taking the itemized deductions rather than the standard deductions. So let's do one more on the personal side. Let's add another one and say this is starting point from the office. And then we did some more charity work over here at this, at this $1 million location. So this is going to be two, five, three, four, Ben, Benedict Canyon, Benedict Canyon and personal. And I'm going to say that that's going to be once again, charity, uh, which possibly we can track for a schedule a, or if it was medical, possibly you can track the miles for medical. But again, that has limitations on your taxes and it's different mileage rate. So I'm going to say, okay, boom. So now we can track that information over here. Super cool. So up top, this, this 2342 is based on the business miles because they're basically just multiplying it out. The mileage that we have now calculated for business to this, I have an unrecognized, let's add these to my personal side. This is for my personal and this is for the personal boom. Okay, so everything's allocated out now between business, personal, and all of the miles. Very nice. So that looks good. And But this is being calculated based on the business miles, and it's just basically multiplying times that 0.655, I believe. Here's our total business miles, and here's our total miles. So obviously, if you wanted to figure out the personal miles, which we're just saying all the personal miles are for charity work that I might use for my schedule a you might give that to your tax preparer and say this is my schedule a charity miles and that comes out of course to 17 uh 16. so at the end of the year at the least you're gonna have to populate this information to give it to uh, a tax professional which you might do by just you know give them this information in a you know a, 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 an email or something or you can screenshot this information or you can basically hit the drop down here and you can go to download trips and this opens a CSV file. So it usually opens in Excel for most people if you have Excel, but it's actually a CSV file. If you want to adjust this file, in other words, you need to save it as an Excel file. Otherwise, all the changes you make are not going to save it. So you need to go like save file, save as, and I'll just dump it into my pictures folder because I don't have any actual pictures and I'm going to change it from a CSV file to an Excel worksheet. There it is. Now I can play with it and adjust it in Excel and uh, do what and and make it uh, make it presentable. So I'm going to make it larger. And let's, uh, let's just I'm gonna select all of these headers and just double click on them just to see what we have here. And so here we have it. So let's put the top one on embolden this. Uh, let's just bold it and then let's add a table. Let's say I add a table that might make it easy to sort insert just a normal table, not the whole, not there on the whole thing. Insert the table. There you go. Okay. So there we have it. And then I'll shorten the starting and ending addresses so we can see what's happening. What's what's happening around here and boom. Now, if this was all just business stuff, you can just basically add the, the whole thing up. I can add a totals row. Let's go to our tables and add a totals row. And let's add a sum here. So it's just summing up. I'm just adding up these, which adds up to 5292. And this is the deduction. So I can add this up, summing this. And boom, that's just adding these up. So that looks good. However, we've got some personal stuff here. Now, if this was all business stuff that you could just basically do that. But the fact that we have some personal means that I could do a filtering thing here. So I could say, let's filter this by, uh, by just the business. And so there's just the business stuff and you might have two tabs then. So you can give this information to someone. Here's my business stuff. And then here's my personal stuff which is actually charitable. There's my charitable miles and here's my personal 
our business miles, right? That's one way you can do it. You can also use a, a pivot table. Might as well do that for the fun of it, right? You can use it. You can insert a pivot table and say, I'm going to, well, we don't need to do that. I won't do a pivot table, but that's, that's it. And then if you got audited or something like that, you've got the information here and you might give it to your tax preparer as well. So they kind of have this backup information to give you a, a tracking of your miles, as opposed to just saying the odometer method <laughs> where you're just like, oh, I think I drove the odometer method is like, let's see. Where's manage vehicles? Uh, uh, I th I think my starting miles were were. Hold on a second. Didn't I have an odometer? I think my starting miles were ten thousand, and my ending miles I think are are like twenty twenty one thousand. So I drove like eleven thousand miles during the year, and I'm just gonna take like eighty percent of it as deductible or something like that. If you do that then you're just estimating out of the blue. And if you get audited on that, you don't have a whole lot of evidence of the, of where you went and whatnot. So what you'd like to, so what you'd like to be able to do is, is be able to give this supporting information to the deduction that you're taking and note that this uh, deduction amount, if I, if I pull over how they're calculating this is that 0.655, right? That's just the mileage rate. So we could just say 0.655. And then if I drove this many miles times that, uh, then you would think, well, hold on, this still has some personal stuff in it. Let's filter this back down to just business. So then, so then it, then it comes out right, right? So it's just the 35.76 business miles times this amount. And that's where they're getting this business deduction. Obviously your accountant We'll take this information and just enter the business miles in, uh, and then and then the system will calculate this in this basically the same way the tax software. But you can get a good estimate of your deduction this way, which might help you for your for your budgeting uh, and whatnot. So that's how you can kind of provide it to your tax professional. Now, the next step is that you might want to say, well, well how can I? see that over here in my financial statements because i have my actual deductions over here and i want to do this for taxes how can i kind of change this possibly with the help of excel if you're a tax professional or doing your own taxes or if you just want to do budgeting so that you can kind of see your income statement we might be able to use like class tracking to give us an idea uh of a, of a of a of the income statement and an adjusted income statement which is kind of neat so we'll t we'll dive into that in future presentations